to draw can be quite challenging. There's so much to learn, you don't even know where to start. You might even try to look into the fundamentals, but you don't even know how to study them. I know, I've been there. So I've compiled some free resources that have helped me throughout this journey, and I'm going to share them with you. Let's start with my least favorite part. Perspective. I've always struggled drawing perspective and backgrounds in general, maybe because I'm really bad at drawing straight lines, but this website really helped me. Drawbox is a set of lessons and exercises to help you with a lot of aspects of art, starting from the very basics like how to draw a line and ending on drawing through vehicles. I highly recommend you doing this. If you follow the instructions and take it seriously, you are 100% guaranteed to improve. These are not simple drawing tutorials, they are going to teach you how to see 3D space itself and translate it into paper. It will take a lot of effort and time to go through this, but trust me, it will be worth it. The most famous part of Draw a Box is the 250 box challenge. You may have heard of it. It's pretty self-explanatory, really. You just have to draw 250 boxes and then check if the perspective is right in each one. It may not look like it, but it's a lot. The way I did it was by setting the goal of 10 boxes per day, maybe 20 if I was motivated. And I recommend you doing something similar. If you try to do them all at once, you might get burned out and even forget the progress you've made. It's better if it's slow and gradual. Now, some resources for anatomy. One of the best free anatomy courses you can find is Procos. They have a whole playlist teaching about how to draw each body part down to specific muscles. The way that I like to study anatomy is by drawing the same body part a bunch of times from reference, using different poses and different angles, until I'm able to draw them from memory. And then I'll move on to the next part. One website that has been very useful is Posemanix. It will provide you with a lot of different poses, allowing you to see all muscles from any angle. When clicking in a pose, you can change the settings. Being able to make each muscle a different color so it will make it easier to identify. You can set a bounding box around the model, helping you with the perspective. You can set a grid to help with the proportions, as well as changing the lighting, which can be very useful and help you understand the form itself. We've been talking about the body, but let's talk about the head. There's this model made by John Azaro, I, I think that's how you pronounce it, that simplifies the planes of the head, making it easier to understand the proportions and how lighting works. In our station, you can find this model, inspired by Azaro's head, that allows you to rotate it, zoom it, and even change the lighting. It's very useful for learning how to draw facial features, even in more extreme angles, that most people find hard to draw. But my favorite part about it are the eyes. This has helped me understand how the eyelids work, wrapping around the eyeball and referencing them from different angles have helped me improve a lot. The next subject is figure drawing. Figure drawing is just as important as anatomy, if not more so. It will prevent your drawings from looking stiff and lifeless. Again, I'll recommend the Proco's lessons. They have a small figure drawing playlist that will be a quick watch and will be 100% worth it. If you're looking for pose references, you can use this website called Line of Action. You can choose if you only want closed or nude models or both. You can also choose the gender and age. You can set how much time each image will appear in case you want to set a time limit for yourself. But don't worry, you can pause the timer at any time. Line of Action also has other features. In case you're interested, there are also references for animals, hands and feet, faces and expressions, and scenes and environments. For figure drawing, I recommend you buying any cheap notebook and allow yourself to be messy with it. When I started studying, I was using a fancy sketchbook and I felt like I had to spend a lot of time in each drawing so that I wouldn't waste the page. But that kind of defeats the purpose. You can even use a pile of printing paper and stapling it together. Just make sure you won't feel bad about drawing terribly on it. It's an important part of the process. Next, color theory. Well, you'll have to read it to understand it. There's no way around it. I've linked some websites that explain it in simple ways, so go check them out. But if you want help in the process of generating color palettes themselves, there are some websites that can help you. First, there's Coolers. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It will generate random palettes for you by clicking the spacebar. You can lock colors you like and edit others until you're satisfied with the results. You can also browse palettes other people have created. 
being able to filter by color, styles, and topics. The other one is a dub color that also has a similar browsing feature, but the creating process is a bit more complex, giving away color wheel and different color harmonies to choose from. You're able to edit each color, the middle one being the reference for all the others. You can also import a picture to use it as the color palette and even make gradients. So these are some resources that have helped me a lot, and I hope they'll help you too. I have linked all of them in the description, so go check them out. If you're a digital artist, there's also a video I made giving my best tips, so go watch it. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, and if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And this is it, thank you for watching!